Then let's do it. How do you learn who you really are? It's not found in books. It's found on the battlefield. What's up, Warriors? All right, my name is Rick. This is the Battlefield of the Mind, and I'm the owner of the Warriors Way Mindset. Today, I'm going to get into a little bit of a serious conversation about our guys. And what I want to do is talk about something a little bit serious. So yesterday, uh, my Andrea told me that she has a friend that she grew up with. Her brother just commit suicide. And we've had people who, like, the guys especially, like, we know people who have committed suicide. And the numbers are staggering. It's almost five times more likely that men are going to commit suicide than women. This is a big number. And it hits home. And this guy, he, he really did have, like, a tough go as far as, like, the things he had to work through, but he was really trying to process something that he couldn't, he couldn't get past something. I didn't know him personally, but I know that this is what happens is there's a, a value or a purpose. And I'm going to kind of spin this off for a second and then bring it back as to why guys don't ask for help. I've run this through the group. I've run this through my men, but why don't people ask for help? Why do guys have to take it on alone and why does this end up being such a heavy thing to the point where there's no hope and there's no other way out except for me taking my own life first off let me say we do address a lot of these things when it comes to purpose it comes to belonging it comes to isolation it comes to depression it comes to the things inside these are all battled by the warrior's way and we do have a collaboration of minds where we are putting ourselves together under a flag of knowing that men need each other. It is not from weakness. It is a sign of strength. And the stronger your counsel is, the more wisdom you have. And the more wisdom you have, the more powerful you are. I'm going to jump in to one of my, uh, one of the memes of the Bible. I love Solomon stuff. So I'm just going to grab a meme out of here for you guys. Uh, Proverbs 24, I'm going to go five and six. This is a, uh, the NLT version, there's a lot of different translations, but I like this one. The wise are mightier than the strong, and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. So don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors. I like this one. I like the way that Solomon is saying that no matter how strong you are, being wise makes you stronger than even the strongest guy. And you keep getting more wisdom, gaining more strength. But how do you gain more strength in that in that light? By having a counsel or advisors or people that you can lean on. Us guys have been doing this for all time. And now recently, guys are supposed to just go it alone. I'm supposed to just handle it on my own. I'm not, I don't need help. So I actually did the survey. I went through my men and we asked questions. I said, what makes it? So guys, don't reach out for help. And this is a list of some of the reasons that they came up with. And I want to get into a couple different parts of this. This is going to be a little more complicated, but I trust that you can keep up. First off, let's just go down the list. Let's talk about it. I believe I can just do it on my own. I don't need help. This is one of the reasons. Another reason, I don't like to rely on others. You know, I've got a, maybe even like a survival aspect. Like I believe no matter what, I'll figure it out. So I don't like to have to rely on other people. Uh, there's an aspect of pride, ego, arrogance, even false confidence that like, you know, I'm I'm already going to be better than anyone else would be anyway. So why ask for help? Other people don't like rejection. Asking for help and having somebody say no. Well, that hurts more than just doing it on my own. So why even ask? <clears throat> Other people have asked for help. People have agreed and then not shown up or even just abandoned them. That usually will trigger some past stuff that we haven't worked through. Past betrayals and or somebody exposing that, hey, when you need help, you're ridiculed or put down for it. This makes you feel incapable or incompetent. People will lose respect for me. This is one thing, too, that I'll lose respect if I need backup or if I need help. I don't want to be a burden on others. All right, I'm going to sidebar on this one just for a second. It's ironic that if you ask the question, do you feel good when you can help somebody who needs help? Almost every time, I would say, every, I can't think of a time when people are like, yeah, it does make me feel good to give. It makes me feel good to help. 
I feel better when somebody needs me and I'm able to provide a service or help somebody. It does feel good. Yet if you need help, you're a burden. Isn't it almost ironic that we deny others the ability to feel good like we do when we need when we get to help them. But if we return the favor and we need help from them, I would be I would lose respect for me. I would I would feel like I'm incompetent or I'm incapable, but it makes them feel just as good to help you as you to help them. I'm just saying, why are you the only one who gets to feel good from helping people? Something to think about. All right, let's keep going. Vulnerability looks and is treated as weakness. If I need help, it's because it looks like I'm weak. I don't believe anybody really cares. This is one of the pieces that go in towards the suicide talk that we were just talking about. I don't believe that anybody even cares. And if I need help, nobody really cares anyways. I don't, uh, let's see, I am not weak, or this is where I, if I need help, then I'm I'm uh, weak and I'm a bitch. This is one of the things one of the guys says is I don't want to be perceived as a bitch. Uh, I, uh, let's see, I call it self-improvement. So this is people who will switch it into, uh, I call it self-improvement. I push my limits and I figure it out. This is me challenging myself to grow. This is uh, This is also the equivalent of I do everything the hard way. This is like, I'm not going to read the book. I'll just figure it out on my own instead of taking generations of wisdom and fast forwarding myself a bunch of information. I'll do it on my own. I feel ashamed when I can't do something. This is a self thing. My self talk is if I need help, then I'm bad for who I am or needing help. I'm bad. Let's see. People in my network are not capable. This gets back to that advisors. Who's in your council? Who's in your group check? group chats who's in your text messages who do you lean on or talk to the most even still the fruit on their tree may not be something that you can rely on so if you're working through marriage issues or you're working through self-discovery on somebody who is single and doesn't work on themselves at all who are you really taking advice from and how much can they help you or even i'm too busy for help which is, again, a funny excuse. Maybe be part true that you're busy, but how productive are you when you're not working on the things that you need to work on? Busiest people in history, yet not productive. So let's switch into another mode here and then get back on topic. When I'm talking about I don't reach out for help, all of these things happen from somebody at some point. There's somebody who put this belief system in that people don't care. I'll be a burden. I'm going to be rejected or treated like a bitch, or I'm going to be, uh, you know, somehow shamed or feel not good enough. If I'm asking for help, somebody said this could be true and I'm going to show it to you. Thus creating this survival or this defense system to protect yourself from feeling bad. I don't want to feel bad. And so I just won't ask for help because it feels worse asking for help and having one of these results than it does with me just being on my own. But is it true? Us men do so much better when you can bounce your ideas and thoughts off of other men. The brotherhood that we have with the Warriors Council, we, I got a guy right now just asking questions, going through divorce, trying to split things. I don't know how this works. And you're watching all these guys going, here's advice. I'm no lawyer, but this is just something that I've been through. Perhaps this perspective can help. And the men with the most perspectives are the wisest in the room. Wisdom is stronger than just raw strength. And so if you can fast forward decades, if not hundreds of years of information and experience in one room into your pocket, now you can look and measure is this valuable? Is this useful to me? And is it my style authentically to help me pursue growth, progress, and development faster or even more appropriately if I need help? That it makes them feel good also to be able to help. We get in our own way for who? Who do we build these for? Because these people that we built these defenses for are not who you're asking for help. You see it? 
the people that I changed myself for to protect myself from are not the ones I'm asking for help from. This is like saying my ex was really mean to me, so everyone's going to be mean to me, so I'll never even talk to anyone because that one person was mean or these three people were mean, so everyone is mean. Who did you change yourself for? Who did you create this safeguard because of? Without your warrior getting involved to challenge these questions, to go, who made it so that I chose to change myself to be something less because other people were unworthy? Your warriors should be challenging this. Why did I change for them? They're not even the people who are going to show up in the first place. So here we are protecting ourselves by trying to do the one thing that causes massive harm. Isolation. We're social creatures. And for whatever reason, if you don't handle it on your own these days, you're not a man. You're not strong. You're weak. You're a bitch. You're pathetic. Wrong. Together, we are stronger. If you're going to war, you want the wisdom of the council. Don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors. Together. It's way stronger. So let me give testament to one of my warriors, Phil. Phil was isolated and on his own. He's a good, good guy, but he didn't have anything going for him. He was highly medicated, going through antidepressants, anxiety, uh, he had a lot of pain. He has really tragic injuries on right side of his body. So he's crushed arm, crushed leg, and he can't even use his right, right hand. And when I met him, he's like, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm alone here trying to figure stuff out. And we have trained and trained and trained. And Phil has worked his way up in the brotherhood as a leader. And what he does, he takes his ability that had no value by itself but has maximum value with a brotherhood. His superpower is that he's likable. Now, before you start going, what, <laughs> what the hell? What kind of power is that? Ask an introvert if they would like to just have that one. <laughs> I haven't had an introvert yet that doesn't go, can I just have them just like me without me doing anything? Like they just, they just like me. Can I just have that? Like, I don't want to have to do a story. I don't want to have to do a joke. I don't want to need the microphone. I just want to be likable. That's Phil. So what he's done is he has taken it so that he's like, I'm going to do a nighttime group. I'm going to make it so there's a group that we can get together. And if any guys are alone, isolated, feel like there is no place they belong, no place that they are valued, no place they have purpose, I'll create a space so guys can just hang. And they're welcome to hang. No blame, no shame, no judgment. Thanks for being here. Let's all BS and work on things together. Now, each of these guys has gone into battle with me, so they know how to fight. They can fight fear and doubt, self-loathing, depression, anxiety. We've gone into the battlefield together. We have beaten these things together. So if another guy comes in going, I'm struggling today, these warriors are proficient. I used to have to take maybe a call every couple of weeks. The guy sitting next to his gun. The guy who's struggling. The guy who's given up all hope. When I have to do these calls with these guys, I, I, I give nobody else takes these calls. The liability are way too high, even for myself, but I wouldn't put it on anyone else. These are life and death conversations. And so I would take these calls and I would have one every few weeks. Testament to Phil, since we built this part of the brotherhood, we haven't had any of those calls in many months. Gosh, it's been at least six months, no calls. You do not have to be alone and you are only as alone as you believe you are. These guys can come and hang out and they feel valued, heard. They have purpose. Someone believes in them. People are proud of them. They can grow in progress and know that they have more to offer than the people who have found themselves to be unworthy that they changed themselves for. Whatever has happened in your life is meant to teach you a lesson, but if you're completely isolated, stuck in a shame stack, depression will overrun you. 
There is no hope for somebody who cannot see light. And if you do not have the awareness of the decisions that you have around you, you cannot make a choice because you can't see one. There's a place. There's a place where warriors get together and we train. We train and we build and we are valued. <clears throat> There's a place. You do not have to be alone. And I don't say this in like this fluffy way. When it comes to the mind, body, heart, spirit, and soul, we are mind and body. We train the action part of you. What are you going to do? How are you going to handle it? Are you trained or untrained? You do not just follow your heart. You must have strategy. You must be tactical. You must have a plan and know how to handle disappointment. Understand that failure and loss is a part of progress. And we train how to go through your grief, how to go through how you cope, how to go through beating addiction, beating depression, beating anxiety. They're beatable and we keep on beating it. I just want to reiterate, you do not have to be alone. There is a place. There's a place where healthy guys can A, go into battle together, grow, push, challenge, and get stronger, but also take your armor off and be able to have fun, goof around, mess with each other, smile, laugh, have a good time, and feel valued and appreciated. These places are coming up and we have one of them. There's other places that do it, but there's other parts that are, some guys are more heart side and have spirit hugs and, you know, want to get more into some sort of a, I don't know, feeling exercise. Listen, we're, we're not doing that here. This is the warrior's way. Do you know how to handle this situation? Let us show you the best practice. This can go along with the feelings you have to sort out, but we have to get some training under us. What are you going to do about it? How do you handle situations? Are you handling it stoic or are you going in reckless? The heart can be a deceiver. The heart can lie because it's greedy. If you just go spirit, I'll just pray. I'll just pray. I'll just pray. I believe God works through us in a different way. He built us with free will. That's the game, you guys. And in which case... What are you going to choose to do with it? God will give you the way, but you have to make an action. There has to be a decision that you do. What do I choose to do? How am I going to handle it? Are you going to choose to stay alone or are you going to choose to reach out? Are you going to have courage in the face of fear or are you going to cower and sit alone and blame everyone else for what you choose to do? We're in the middle of are you trained or untrained? You do not have to be alone. You do not have to be isolated. We are all connected. Together we are stronger. This is the way. So if you're looking to join the Warriors way, click in. Have a call. Get some tools. Get the weapons that you need to be able to start fighting the battles that are inside of your mind. And it's time to start fucking winning. It's time for you to start taking your power back because power is not given, it's taken. You must fight for it. But if you are not trained how to fight the battles inside of your head and in your heart, you have been getting your ass kicked long enough. Fighting alone is difficult, but locking shields with brothers who have been in battle will make it so you can kill things you've never imagined. Breaking curses, breaking generational curses so your kids don't have to making it so that the demons and the monsters inside of your head that tear you apart and kill your dreams are now defeated or kept at bay. And understanding there are parts in our, our lives, it may be a person or it may be a belief system that's limiting that destroys everything that we have. There is a way, and we do it together. So for any guys that you know who are struggling, this isn't theory and therapy, it's practice and tactical strategy. We focus on doing the work. So let, let your brothers know. Let your uncle know. Let your father know. There's a place. We don't, our age range goes from 24 to 75. We work with men. Is it a race thing? No, we've got all races. Every Everyone from 
black, white. We got guys in Kuwait. We've got guys in all over the world. Like it does, I don't, we don't care. We got Japanese to, to you name Arabic. It, it, we don't care. Are you a person? Then you're one of us. Are you a man? A woman? Do you have the part inside of you that is sick and tired of not having confidence, boundaries, and feeling completely alone, not having strategy, and feeling like you have to figure it out or else you're incapable, worthless, or a bitch? Wrong. Together, we are stronger. One more time, let me remind you. Proverbs 24, 6. Don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors. Together, we're stronger. We'll crush it today, warriors. I hope I get to talk to you soon.